it's me and in today's video I'm going to be telling you what you need to know before you get a hamster. Hamsters are very commonly stereotyped and most people just go to like the pet store and they come back with a hamster and all of its accessories and things like that. This is actually very wrong for a hamster and it's very bad. Most people do those things and it's really not good for the hamster. So I'm going to be telling you what you need to know so then you don't make these mistakes. Hamster sleeping cycle. Hamsters are nocturnal slash crepuscular, meaning that they are either mostly active during the night or they're mostly active during dusk and dawn. If you are a kid with an early bedtime, you won't be seeing your hamster too much because both of you have opposite sleeping cycles and they might not be the best pet for you. You also shouldn't adjust your hamster's sleeping cycle because it can be very stressful for the hamster cages. Hamsters need a bare minimum of 450 square inches of floor space for their cage. Most pet stores will suggest 144 square inches for their cage and that is just way too small for a hamster. Hamsters seem like very small and petite creatures but they need a lot of room to run around because hamsters in the wild can run up to several miles. It's also very important that your hamster has a proper sized cage or else this can cause your hamster to be very stressed out and start bar biting. Bar biting is when your hamster chews on the bars of the cage and this might seem like a very funny hamster behavior but it's actually not and it is anything but funny. It's, it's basically when your hamster is trying to tell you that they're very stressed out. They're not trying to wear down their teeth because um, bars actually can chip their teeth and bar biting is just a sign that they are very stressed out and most of the time it's because they either don't have the proper sized cage or they're just in a very stressful situation. A stressed hamster can also get wet tail which is a disease that they can get from being too stressed. It's basically when like their bottom looks wet. It's not actually wet but it looks that way. It's a disease and hamsters can get it fairly very easily because hamsters are um, ham Hamsters can get stressed out just easily in general. Wet tail is a little hard to cure by yourself. You most likely would have to go to the vet and it's better if you didn't have to and you just had it fine from the beginning by getting them a proper sized cage. Now for the bedding. Hamsters need something other than plastic or glass on the bottom of their cage and since hamsters are burrowing animals, they need room to burrow and create their chambers. Hamsters need at least six inches of bedding in their cage in one area. Since hamsters in the wild mostly live underground, that's like where they live, that's where they build their chambers and burrows and stuff like that. So your hamster also needs that same amount of bedding so then they can make all their burrows and stuff because most of the day your hamster will most likely be burrowing or sleeping in their chambers. But when you do pick out a bedding to put in your hamster cage, stay away from pine, cedar, scented, and anything called softwood shavings. All those beddings are not safe for your hamster and could give them a respiratory infection. But not all beddings are not safe for your hamster. Some beddings that you can use are paper-based bedding that is non-scented and aspen. Aspen is completely fine for your hamster. They are also wood shavings, but these type of wood shavings are safe for your hamster. Some brands that I would recommend getting your bedding from would probably be Carefresh and KT Clean and Cozy. These beddings are like, I love them so much. They are my favorites. They are very soft and your hamster can make very good burrows with this type of bedding. Toys and chew toys. Your hamster needs other things in their cage other than just their burrows to go around. Hamsters need something on top of that bedding to then during the night when they're active or during disc or dawn, they will play around and so they will just go around their cage but they don't really burrow too much. They mostly burrow during the day because in the wild that's what they would do because usually during the day their predators are out there so that's why they stay underground. 
but then during the night they come out of their chambers and burrows and they just like go around and stuff and they you know hunt for their food and so that's why you need to make you have to make sure that you have a lot of toys in your hamster's cage your hamster should have enough toys to fill up the top of their cage and more toys means that your hamster will have more to explore and your hamster will get more brain stimulation if you have like chew toys and stuff hamsters teeth are continuously growing and that's why they need chew toys chew toys are just to help them wear down their teeth because um, they're con since they're continuously growing they need to wear it down and hamsters can have like chew toys like this or they can have like you know those willow sticks loofah chews wooden chews there are a bunch of chew toys that you can get for your hamster and you also want to make sure that your hamster is wearing down the teeth because if they're not then you might eventually have to go to the vet because if your hamsters teeth are overgrown then that's not good for them not good for their health and it's very it would be very hard for them to eat their foods normally. Wheels. Your hamster needs a wheel in their cage because in the wild they will run several miles and since your hamster can run several miles in the wild that means they need to be able to run still in their enclosure. But what types of wheels are actually safe for hamsters? Wire and mesh wheels are just horrible for your hamster and their limbs can get stuck in there and they can get a disease called bumblefoot. Bumblefoot is when your hamster has like these blisters on their paws and it can be very painful for your hamster to walk around. Hamsters also need a proper sized wheel. Dwarf hamsters should have around six to eight inches. Syrian and Chinese hamsters should have nothing less than an eight inch wheel. This is a six and a half inch silent spinner and my um, robo hamster patches fits perfectly in here. Most Syrian hamsters will need an 11 inch wheel because just because Syrians are like the largest breed of hamster that you can adopt or get. So they will mostly need, most likely need an 11 inch or maybe something more. But Syrian and Chinese hamsters should have nothing less than an eight inch wheel. And it is important to have the proper sized wheel or else your hamster's back can start curving while they're running. And when it can be very damaging to their back after multiple usages. You also shouldn't be keeping your hamster in a hamster ball or anything like that because hamster balls actually have very low ventilation and your hamster can't really, like they're, they're, they have to run in it because there's nowhere else to go. If they try to escape, the ball will just roll and they'll end up rolling and rolling and rolling and they can't get out. Now, if you're running, you have to breathe, right? But there are barely any ventilation holes in any hamster ball and they are just not safe for your hamster. Both of those things adding together make a very big problem for your hamster. You do not want to be putting your hamster in a hamster ball. Cleaning. A hamster's cage should be spot cleaned every day or every other day. Spot cleaning is when you find spots in their cage on the surface that have soiled bedding um, and you just like take that and throw it away. Spot cleaning can help your hamster's cage be still be clean throughout the month because um, at the end of the month or after a month your hamster will need a cage a full cage cleaning so this is when you have to take your hamster and all of its accessories and toys out of the cage and you go underneath the bedding and get all of um soiled bedding and you just replace it with new bedding and that's basically a hamster cage clean you would want to make sure you don't throw out everything because not all of it is soiled and it can be very wasteful and it's also very stressful for your hamster because a hamster, they have all of their scents, chambers, and burrows in there. So once that's kind of taken away, it feels it's very stressful for them. And again, we all know what happens to a hamster. They can get too stressed. They can get a disease or, you know, they can just be very stressed. And you do not want your hamster to be stressed. Now for a hamster's diet. They have to eat something, obviously. So for their diet, I keep my diet in a little jar. Keeping it in a jar can actually keep your food for longer, it can help it stay fresh for longer. Hamsters are omnivores and they need 17 to 19% protein, 4 to 7% fat, and 8 to 13% fiber. Now, the best hamster diet you can get on the market right now is the Higgins Sunburst. Um, this is mainly just like the seed part, seed mix part of your diet but that does not have enough protein in their diet because hamsters are omnivores and they need more protein than that. So you can add the Missouri rat and mouse diet to like, so it should be a 50-50 thing. 
you should put 50% of the Higgins Sunburst Gourmet Blend with the Missouri Rat and Mouse Diet. This is very important because the Missouri Rat and Mouse Diet has all the pellets and protein that you need and the Higgins Sunburst alone does not have enough protein. So that's why you have to have an extra thing because most diets don't sell don't sell it with protein, enough protein. So that's why you usually have to get two things to have enough protein in your whole hamster's diet. And what's very good about the Higgins Sunburst Gourmet Blend is that there is a variety of food for your hamster, so it's very good. You also want to make sure you are giving your hamster fruits, vegetables, and other things um, on the side. Now, where should you get your hamster? Most people just walk into a pet store and buy their hamster, and you might be considering that too, but I have to stop you because this is actually like the worst way you can get your hamster. The other two options that would be better would be to adopt or find a breeder near you that does is an ethical breeder and breeds hamsters. But buying a hamster is something you really want to avoid. The reason why you don't want to buy a hamster is because when you buy a hamster from a large pet store like PetSmart or Petco, you are supporting animal mills. Animal mills is basically when you buy a hamster or something, that hamster was breeded because two hamsters were being breeded over and over and over again. And because they've been breeded continuously and repeatedly, this one of them can get a disease and then pass it on to, to their young, and you are going to be buying their young hamster, so you have a chance that that hamster is going to be having a disease or is just you're also just still supporting it you may think that you are rescuing a hamster if you buy a hamster but you're actually not when you buy a hamster it creates more demand for the hamster to be bought so they make more hamsters breed over and over and over again and then the process continues and it you do end up supporting it in a way plus when you adopt a hamster you are rescuing a hamster and you are giving them a forever home hamsters from uh, large pet stores they are not in the best conditions hamsters you adopt will most likely be handled more than hamsters you would buy from a pet store because they had a previous owner or something like that um, but they are most likely have been handled more than pet store hamsters. You can also try finding a breeder that breeds hamsters in your area too if there aren't any hamsters up for adoption. You just want to make sure that the breeder that you are trusting is an ethical breeder because you want to make sure that they know about hamster genes and stuff and they are a, you know they're professional but some signs that they are not is if they call hamsters teddy bear hamsters, panda bear hamsters, or golden hamsters. An ethical breeder should call a hamster by their actual breed, not by any nicknames. So how many hamsters should you get? Hamsters are very territorial and they need a lot of room so then they can have it to themselves. They shouldn't be kept in pairs because they can end up fighting. The only breeds that I would, that you could have them be paired would be dwarf hamsters but then again I also don't recommend it because they can still end up fighting and you'll never know like they could be fighting during night while you're sleeping so that's why I suggest that you kick, um, get one hamster you also shouldn't be putting your hamsters on playdates or anything like that or they shouldn't be near each other because they can end up fighting and fighting can lead to death because hamsters since they're very territorial they will fight each other so then they can claim territory and which is why you do not want two hamsters in the same cage or just near each other. Now, your hamster needs to have a vet fund. Just because you maybe thought that they were cheap or inexpensive, that does not mean that they don't deserve the proper medical care that they need. You never know when something might happen, so it's always best to be prepared. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys learned everything you need to know before getting a hamster. Remember to subscribe so then you can be notified when I post a new video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!